Yeah, I'd have to. Agree, I'd have to agree with you, Paul. I'd have to, I like eleven and five with a plus minus a one. Look it up again. Buffalo Bills 2019 schedule after Dallas. So don't remember now. doing right now. <laughs> Subscribe now and we will see you at Thurman's 34 Rush April 25th and 26th for the NFL Draft. So last year we were a lot of people were in an uproar about the schedule because there was only one primetime game, 15 one o'clock games, and um, the divisional games near the end of the year after the bye week was right. insane. Right. Um, and it, it was it was interesting because as we cut that episode, which was roughly around this time, um, we were talking about the possibility of McCarron starting the first ten games, mm-hmm. and what would the record of the Bills be? Oh, how things have changed at the bye week, and then would the would the rookie come in? But they hadn't drafted a rookie yet, so we we didn't know who the quarterback of the Bills was even going to be. Right. Well, this year things are a little bit different. Right? Yep. Yeah, I mean, you're older. You're you're older. That's how it works. You're getting close to celebrating annual birthdays. Shut up. I already is, am. Is this your tenth annual thirtieth birthday? Yep. You too. You take. You like Brian Regan? You ever seen him? Uh, whatever you did just sounded like uh, the guy from Crank Gankers. <laughs> uh, yay! I got mail. Yay! That actually is the best impression that you do. Like that is a fact. Thanks, man. Appreciate yeah. it. You're welcome. I did something. All right. So, right, do you have any glaring concerns about the schedule? Um. Well, the one thing I think is interesting is that everybody's talking about the Bills not having a primetime game, yet they have a to-be-determined game in the end of December. Yes. So, That's I flex. don't... Right, exactly. So, I know people complain about primetime, but I'm I'm willing to accept that consolation. My, my day gets all thrown off when they play at four. Like, my whole day is thrown off. Yeah, we don't do the postgame till like, nine o'clock at night. It sucks. It sucks. But then again, we never had that. Right. We never had that problem. The right. only time we did it was the Monday night uh-huh. last year. Yep. Which was brutal. Yeah, but it was. point being is this. They all have one, all 1 o'clock games. We talked about it last year is that you could develop some consistency if you have a lot of young players on your team. You start to develop that regimen. When is the bye week? Uh, bye week here is not labeled, but it looks like October uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Bye week's week 6. So it's early. So that sucks. Well, here's the problem when you have an early bye week, right? Yes. Those rookies, that's the start of their season, right? If you look at the bye week as week six, yes. the rest of the season is a college season. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the, fl- the, the other side of the coin was when it was last year, it was week 11. Yeah. So those guys are only used to playing 10 weeks. They got that much-needed break, and then they're charged up for the rest of the season. Well, and also the Bills are playing Dallas – Week 13, that's November 28th, that's a 4.30 game. So Thanks why are we that. counting? Yeah, but why isn't that counted as a primetime game? I, I think mean, that's, it technically is. I'd rather have that than a primetime game. I agree. That's amazing. I agree. Uh, I, now, I didn't, I unfortunately did not go into the rabbit hole of, is there a team that has a Thursday night game before they play us? Yeah, that, so that's, always, rest. yeah that's always a challenge because you're absolutely right. That makes a big deal. It, does, it is. You got extra three extra days to prep for that team uh-huh. and you get to sit uh, and watch that game you get to specifically watch that team play yep um, I mean before, prior to breaking down film I mean it's well not only that but you know they have that Thursday game and they gotta come back on the short week you know they gotta come back um, 
off a longer week, which, again, screws a little bit with players, right? Yeah. You normally see that those Thursday games and the Sunday games after, they're they're not good football games. No, no. And we the, the Thursday night game after the Sunday, yeah, um, you don't see much change in what the offense does. No, no. Um, they're often very similar. It's very, very, yeah, it's very, very But similar. we don't have any of that this year. The um, offense? Yeah. <laughs> Your words, not mine, man. I, I just... Your words, not mine. All right, so I'm excited to say the Bills are opening up the season uh, in New York and then New York so they can just stay because they're playing. In right? the same stadium. Yeah, yeah, it's the same stadium. Are they going to help them turn the colors of the tarps on the outside after the game is over? Well, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, they play the Jets. Yeah. <laughs> they, will, they will have played more games in that stadium than the Giants before they get there. That's right. Yeah, that's absolutely right. <laughs> I, I I never... Th- well, that and, didn't the, and the Jets to Giants game, those are like home games anyway because so many Bills fans will travel to go they see will. that game. They will. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there were some Bills fans that are already taking those two weeks off. Oh, sure. And like staying in New York. Oh, as a Bills fan, think of it. You could just, you could go, you could take off Friday, you know, you, you go Saturday, you're there for Sunday, then you only need a week's vacation and then a day. You could stay the Why whole not spend time. a week in Absolutely. New York early September? Absolutely. Because it's never busy there. No, never. But you can always catch the shuttle from New York City uh, in Times Square. There's a shuttle that goes to Stanford, Connecticut, where you can go watch Maury Povich tape. It's on Tuesdays in case anybody's making that trip. Very important to go see American Treasure. Maury Povich is an American treasure. You know what? As you were talking about that, you said Stanford, <laughs> Connecticut. I saw, I thought you were talking about WWE Studios. Oh, no. No. Why would anybody want to go there? Or the that's where the headquarters is. Yeah. Why would anyone want to go there? Yeah. I only want to go where real things happen. Oh, because Maury's real. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then you got the Bengals and the Pats. Uh-huh. Which Pats, people have said, don't start off. Very fast. Yeah, no, I'm happy to get the Patriots early in the season. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm very happy to get the Patriots early in the season. The Bengals are looking dreadful this year. Uh, so, um, it's interesting. You look at the Jets and the Giants, right? So, the Jets just gained Le'Veon Bell, right? Yes. The Bills haven't seen Saquon Barkley yet. But you're also looking at an OBJ-less New York Giants, right? Who are going to yeah. have to depend on Sterling Shepard and Emmanuel Ingram right now. As yes. their primaries. So did they, did they just sign Golden Tate? Is that who else they Okay, so yeah. they also snagged Golden Tate. But um, then you go to the Bengals, and the Bengals are a disaster right now. But um, have uh, Tyler Boyd, A.J. Green, and Joe Mixon. Yeah, but again, you're only looking, we're only looking at offense, right? And I know I only mentioned offense, but that that Bengals defense is old. And they can yeah. turn things over. And they are not financially in a place where they can really do that. No. No, they're not. They're uh, and, and people are, have a lot of them... A lot of people, a lot of draft pundits have them taking a cornerback, which would be their third first-round draft pick yeah. in their secondary. Yeah. Which is something you would like to have, but when one well, of them's 32. Well, I, you know I think it's I mean? also important to make sure that, like, you're looking at a new head coach there as well. And Marvin Lewis kept that team on, kept that defense on life support for a long time. Yeah. So Marvin Lewis is gone. I, I don't think they're... Um, Everything oh, changed today. there with the exception of Mike Brown. Yeah. Yeah. So, in that respect, I mean, they, they're changing their offensive philosophy. They're changing their defensive philosophy. They got a bunch of new moving parts. Yeah. Very young coach who they think that there's tap as a McVay esque um, guy. Blah, so, blah, blah. Offense, blah, blah. It's just all these coaching hires are so boring. And yeah, but the thing that would begs the question, which is up for another episode, is is Dalton his guy? Oh, I think that's yeah, that's a good conversation. Thrilled to get the Patriots in Week Four because yeah, the last few years the Patriots have had have had some struggles until they get tape on teams. Once they get tape on teams, they figure things out, then everything is all right. Yeah, but, um, but you're going up against Le'Veon Bell, Saquon Barkley, Joe Mixon, Sony Michelle. Right. First four weeks. Yeah. They had trouble that's a stopping the run. Yeah, that's you a got to stop the run. Yeah, that's a gauntlet. So, how does that impact the draft? Well, it always impacts the draft because you got to take care of your division first. Sure. I've always preached that. Sure. If you guys have watched a number of episodes, I'm always banging that drum. Um, so, if you're talking about in your division, you got to face Le'Veon Bell, you have to face Sony Michelle, and then 
Kenyon Drake. Okay, um, you have a lot of these really fast wide receivers. You know, you got Devontae Parker now in Miami. You got um, you got Roddy Anderson, and Anun was a big body guy. Right. So you need a, you need speed and size to try to defend those guys. Um, the tight ends for all those teams. I mean, you got Safari and Jenkins now right. on the Patriots. After I mean, until you draft all the fans. Yeah. Ralph, there. yeah, that's a nightmare I choose not to have tonight. Point being is this: those are the things you have to contend with on a daily basis, on a weekly basis for your division. Now, how are you going to equip your team? You got to equip your team for a run defense. You got to have a very physical cornerback, which they do. And um, as far as the other side of the ball, you're going to have to go up against the likes of a Greg Williams coach defense, a Bill Belichick coach defense. And um, I believe it was the defensive coordinator for, I want to say Flores, who was with the Patriots last year, and now is in Miami as the head coach. Mm-hmm. So you have to, that type of style of defense you're going to have to contend with. So offensively, you're going to see a lot of different looks that you're going to have to try to contend with. Well, so that's me, how it affects your well, draft. Let me ask this. So what makes an impact more immediately? Okay, and I'm, this is going to be a granular question, okay? A defensive end, a defensive tackle, or a linebacker. Which impacts your defense immediately, right away? What's the easiest transition make at nine? Remember, Bill, we're assuming the Bills are picking at nine. Mm. So what makes a bigger impact? A, line, a strong side linebacker, because the Bills are a short, strong side linebacker. A defensive end, which again, they don't necessarily need, but all their defensive ends are coming up on contract years. Or D tackle, which again the Bills had rotation across the line. It was Kyle Williams. So, like, what makes a more immediate impact? I would say the defensive tackle because you can't avoid him. I agree with you. Um, so it, it's almost like saying, "Now I'm going to take it to the extreme." I'm going to take the obviously to the extreme. It's like saying, "Would you rather face a defense that has Aaron Donald, mm-hmm. Joey Bosa, or?" Um, Bobby Wagner. Well, you can get away from the other, the last two. You don't, right. have to, you just don't run his way. Right. You know, you can double team him and all that other stuff. But the guy that's right in the face of the quarterback and the offense—that's, I'd, I'd say that guy makes the biggest impact right now. Right. I, uh, and, over time. Well, yeah, I think over time it's a little bit of a different circumstance because you look at the production from that position and it's, yeah, you know, often more of a hurdle than a wall that they run into. Right. Yeah, but if you think about it, are the Bills planning for this season? Are they planning for the future? Because well, they, next year they cannot have any. Yeah, you're not drafting end. for the first six games. All I'm saying is that if you draft a defensive end versus a linebacker versus a defensive tackle, how does it impact the out of the division games you have? Because you have three division games in your first six games. How does it impact your division? Right. That's that's what I was asking. I agree no, with yeah, the D yeah. tackle. I think yeah. it makes. I think the transition is easier for a D tackle yeah. because. Again, you could limit the situations that they're in, right? And truthfully speaking, it's a little bit simpler a concept than a strong side linebacker. Yeah, but the, the way that the, the Bills specifically play a defensive front is more rotational. They're right. going to take a ninth overall pick for a guy that plays 62% of the snaps. It's kind of... If you can get to the backfield, yeah. All right, That's let's move on. Oh, come on! <laughs> All right, so after the Bills thumped the Patriots September 29th... They play the Patriots again. No, they don't. Uh, what they, about? Well, they do play them again, but later. No, next week. What? Who are they playing? Tennessee. Oh, Patriots South because of Rabel? Yeah. Come on. Patriots... No, that's Patriots Mid-South. Patriots South is Houston. <laughs> <laughs> so you get Tennessee. Tennessee... And they have problems at quarterback. Mariota is just not the answer there. And they know it. Tennessee is still in play for a QB because they got problems. No OC, but didn't change their um, head coach. No. Yeah. No, no, no. They, their philosophy. Right. They got they, they, they brought in another offensive coordinator that has a similar philosophy. Yep. Uh, because LeFleur went to Green Bay. Mm-hmm. Sure did. So. Well, and then you get Miami again after Tennessee. And truthfully, the Tennessee game doesn't bother me too much. I know that a lot of people are getting together. I saw travel packages already being put together for the Tennessee game. Uh-huh. After the whole the whole Twitter poll thing. Oh, boy. So, the Bills get their revenge in week five by going to Tennessee. 
Um, you get Miami uh, at home. Week uh, what is that seven? That's after the bye week. So I'm happy to have a division game after the bye week. I just wish it wasn't Miami. Why? You think they're gonna look past them think to Philly? No, 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 no. I just don't think Miami's that good. No, you have no, you have no quarterback. You have a new head coach. Like the the makings are there that you, they're gonna be a bad football. How dare team. you spit on the good name of Ryan Fitzpatrick? He's gonna be five and zero going into that game. Oh no. <laughs> No way. You know he no will. No way. And they'll end up 6 and yeah. ten. And they'll be like, Brian Fitzpatrick starts 5-0. and oh, Let's give him a contract extension. <laughs> that was four years, $36 million sound, Ryan. Well, insert the scream after that one touchdown here. I know, right? Yeah! <laughs> it, doesn't even, it sounds like somebody stepped on a squeaky toy. <laughs> it doesn't sound like that should have came Repeat out of I'm not worried about Miami again round two. It is a home game. It's after the bye week. So, again, I like the division game after the bye week. I just wish it wasn't Miami. Um, you have Philadelphia immediately after that. And that I think it's important to have the bye week to prepare for them. Right? You don't – Yeah. You, you look at it. This is a team that's gone to the gone to the big game a couple times. The quality control will be – during the bye week will be more focused on Philly than the Miami. Right. Well, especially since, you know, I understand this is the first time you're playing Miami – but you do have Miami four games later, right? So there has to be some focus made to Miami. You're going to play them again mm-hmm. in the not too distant future. But mm-hmm. I agree. I think they're going to be preparing more for Philly than they are for Miami. Which uh, makes it a trap game. Trap game. No, I, I, I know. Trap games don't really exist. They don't exist. When there's only 16 games, they don't exist. But you can see you can see that once games are over, it's like, oh, they, were, they may have been looking ahead to this. Sure. You know what I mean? All that sure. stuff. So. Uh, after Philly, um, who well, again, Philly's a weird one to me. Because, like, you look at them and you go, okay, they're not doing a ton to get better. They're just going to keep going with what they got? Okay. <laughs> um, but, I mean, uh, an Allen Wentz, that's, that's self itself. I agree. Allen versus Wentz is a that's great if he's, story that, if, he, if Wentz makes it to a week, what is that? <laughs> then you have the Redskins, who, in my opinion... One of the worst teams in the NFL this season. So you play Hands Miami, down. Philly, then the Redskins. Mm-hmm. You can that's two out of two out of those three weeks are like some of the worst teams. Yeah. Washington is in is in bad shape. I'm glad it's Washington at home and not Washington at FedEx Field. Because I like Josh Allen's career. I would like for it to continue. And FedEx Field has killed so many quarterbacks' careers in the last decade. Like just if last year didn't show you that FedEx Field is a problem. <laughs> I don't know what will. Snyder's not going to change that. No. No way. He's going to keep doing what he does. No. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Quarterback? Just get one with legs. (laughs) How hard can it be? (laughs) Washington could be one of the worst football teams in the NFL this year. Um, And Washington has a lower draft pick than the Bills this year. They're at 15. Um, And Washington's a good candidate to trade up to nine because they can keep Need quarterback. They need their quarterback. Plus, so, if they're if they're planning on starting said quarterback, we know that if they if somehow they trade with the Bills and the Bills give them their 2020 first round pick, and Washington is not very good this year. Yep. That's usually the, how. That's why that teams game. give up first round picks. Well, and that's season. what the Bills try to do with Mahomes, right? They yeah. look at it like, okay, well, we're going to get another first. We're going to get a first round pick. Okay, it's going to be lower, but we're going to get another one next year. And you're and you're drafting a quarterback with that. With this pick, yes, and you're going to give us the pick next year. Teams normally that start rookie quarterbacks are, are again often terrible, so it's a good bet to make. You're no bueno. Yeah. Um, so after you get uh, the uh, after you get three home games in a row, so you get Miami, Philadelphia, and Washington at home. You go to Cleveland, which, which is everybody's pining. I know, but everybody's pining about that game, right? Because Cleveland is the darling of the NFL network Mayfield right now. Mayfield versus Allen. Yeah, I'm that excited could, about that. That could be a now, if things play out the way all Bills and Cleveland fans hope, right. that could be a preview of a playoff game. Sure. Absolutely. Could Browns be. versus Bills. Who yeah, would have ever thought that say I know, that? right? What is this, 1989? <laughs> <laughs> the thing about the Cleveland that intrigues me is that of, of, of the 32 teams, they're the only team that has completely cleared house as yeah. far as... I think I may have mentioned it with uh, the Bengals, but the Bengals still had some consistency there. However, the um, the Browns, 
new head coach, new offensive coordinator, new offensive philosophy, yep. new defensive coordinator, new defensive philosophy. Yep. They're changing up their entire Average. scheme. And they're still being loved by everybody because of the well, players on the team. Well, sometimes talent will trump coaching. We sure. should have the Bills. It's a lot of words here. I don't know what to pick first. Um, I'm not trying to make any enemies, but my but point I, is, we said that they... They believe they can coach everybody up, and yeah. the athleticism sometimes takes over. That's true. That's true. Um, I I am intrigued by the Cleveland game, but again, there's a lot changing in Cleveland. So come week six, that team has the possibility of having absolutely imploded. Yes. With the personalities that are on that team. So that'll be a fun game to watch the first four or five games of Cleveland and see how they get going. They're a very emotional team, so if they get hot, they could be a very dangerous team to play because they're going to believe they can conquer the world. Mm -hmm. So Cleveland's going to be a fascinating one to watch the first few games of the season. Then you get Miami again in Miami. Um, all Bills players are happy because they don't have to pay taxes on that game because they're playing in Miami. Same goes for Tennessee, actually. Yep. Yep. Uh, Tennessee Indeed. and Miami, both non-tax states. Looks like the NFL is rewarding the Bills for having to play <laughs> in New York. Again, the first two games of the season, they got to pay oh. New York taxes. Then they're like, oh, let's send them. Let's make sure they get to Tennessee this Jersey year. Jersey taxes are the worst. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to pay Jersey taxes. You got to pay New York taxes when you play in Buffalo. So they gave them a little bit of a reprieve center of Tennessee. You stay with no income tax. Um, you get Miami again uh, November 17th. You get the Broncos at home November 24th, which is should be just declared Stop. kids game. <laughs> right? Just don't do it during the preseason. Just declare November 24th kids day. Flacco. I can't wait to see Flacco. Well, and and I'm glad the Bills what have the, what the Broncos. Is that game? That's the 24th. Oh. So the Bills have the 24th. That's Sunday, the, November 24th. And then they play Dallas on the 28th. So mm. this is where the schedule gets <laughs> a little challenging, dicey. right? So while the Broncos are projected to, again, be pretty awful, which, I mean... They're looking pretty awful. Eh? You yeah, went and just got Joe awful. Flacco as your quarterback. so. But they got Vic Fangio as the new head guy there, so they I will be it, very they, sound defensively. But they just reinvented their wide receiver group. Their, Emmanuel Sanders will be back up to speed by that point. So you have Emmanuel Sanders there plus a bunch of rookies. Like They just De drafted Sutton last year. Denver, has, Denver is on the way up, right? But their defense is on the way down. So uh, does Joe Flacco put their offense over the top? I uh, know. No, he no. doesn't. So I'm still not sold that the Broncos are going to be very good this year. Um, I don't know why they thought Case Keenum was the answer at quarterback. I don't know what they were thinking. Patchwork. Yeah, Patchwork. I mean, it was just a couple of years. He was just signed to a couple of years. Well, you know what? That... But, the, I mean, the Broncos aren't precluded from drafting a quarterback now either. Elway was up. there. He was there in 83, first of all, at a quarterback class. Yeah. He was there. Um, he didn't have to sign Keenum. He could have waited for the draft. And what did he do? With the, with the, with the had Broncos a, had the sixth overall pick. Well, and he had a deal with the Bills for the Bills to trade up to that pick, yeah. but they passed up on it because they took Chubb. Because Chubb was on the board. Mm -hmm. Can't pass up on Chubb. That's what she said. Ah! Yeah! Like, the Broncos had an opportunity to make themselves better. I don't think they did it. No. Right. Um, so you got the Broncos at home, and then you're in Dallas for that Thanksgiving game, and that game's going to be. A bloodbath. The Dallas game is going to be nasty. In what respect? So the Bills defense should be on full roll by then, right? You oh, look yeah. at Dallas. Dallas's offensive line is always a challenge. So you always have to question whether the Bills are going to get pass rush, right? Because Dallas, Dallas offensive line the last four years has been outstanding. You have Ezekiel Elliott, who mm. might be suspended by that time. I suppose you never know. <laughs> um, stop. But you have Ezekiel Elliott, so you have to stop the run. You have to stop Amari Cooper. Uh, again, the defense is. Bleh. I want Tremaine Edmonds to introduce himself to Ezekiel Elliott. Oh, I would love. They're that. gonna meet. Oh yeah, that's gonna be great. I'm just, I'm just intrigued by that matchup. Well, don't expect to get to the edges on the on the Bills this season. No. Don't enough. expect to get to the edges. No. But again, Zeke doesn't live on the edges. Zeke lives in the. In the he lives wherever he wants. Zeke's everywhere. Well, if he plays football the way that he's frosted flakes, everybody's in trouble. The thing about it that's, that's so intriguing to me is that with, with the exception of, it seems like with the exception of Miami, but you could, you could make a case for Drake being good. There's solid running back cores that we have to play against. Up and down the schedule. Mm -hmm. Up and down. Yep, there are absolutely. solid. So that being said, not just in the division, but overall, 
stop in, the run. In game. a passing league, you have to stop the run. Yeah, and and on this schedule, you have to stop the run mm-hmm. because just let's just go over the games in Hulk. We're almost done with the schedule, right? The Jets got to stop the run. The Giants got to stop the run. Bengals got to stop the run because if you can stop the run, they're 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 not strong enough in the quarterback position at this point yeah, to survive. Some of them, yeah. right? The Patriots, you have to stop the run because that's what they live on. They live on the run, so you mm-hmm. got to stop the run. Let Tom try and beat you deep. Tennessee, I mean, Derrick Henry's there. Yeah, but I don't think the run is. I mean, the run is critical to their offense because you have Mariota as your quarterback. But I've seen Mariota go thirty for forty-two. You know, so I, I've seen it happen. Yeah, but for, uh, it was for one hundred eighty-nine yards. Right, okay, back. <laughs> Miami, um, I mean, we don't know, so I think we have to kind of hold on Miami because we, we Drake don't is so really dangerous, know. Though. He is that's dangerous, but again, we don't know how that's going to play out. So I think Miami is one that you can kind of hold on. Gotcha. Uh, the Eagles survived without the run all season, so you you kind of get by there. Washington uh, lived on Adrian Peterson, which he's you know. So you can have AP and Geis, mm-hmm. so to contend with. Yep, um, Cleveland uh, more Chubb. And what week is that? That's week, what, 10? Week 10, Hunt's going to be back. Nine, uh, let's see, eight, nine, yeah, week 10. So you're going to have to, well, Hunt is going to be back for yep. that game Kareem as Hunt's well. going to be there. So that's going to be an issue. Right. Um, you get, uh, after that, you have the Broncos. Um, and Lindsay, also, Lindsay, Lindsay and Freeman so are very good. Yeah. Um, obviously, Dallas with Zeke. Uh, mm-hmm. Baltimore, you don't know who's going to be running the football. Mark Ingram. Yeah, Mark uh, Ingram. I don't think I don't think the run is as paramount to their game. No, no, I'm saying is gone. I'm just trying to listen to the guy. You, you, you have to stop. You have to stop Lamar Jackson. Yes. So I mean, if you're gonna stop the run, that's what you're doing. You're Which just opens up holes for Ingram as well. Right. I agree. When they run the RPO, they're gonna, right? They're to gonna pretend. be protecting the perimeter. They're exactly. Gonna be protecting the interior. Um, you always have to be concerned about Pittsburgh running the football with James Conner, um, and that's the end of the season. So it's running back, running back, running. You, you got to stop the run. Got to stop the run. So two division games to close out the season. Home. Or no, away at the Patriots. We didn't actually talk about the Steelers game. Do you I, think Big Ben is even going to be welcomed in I that locker room at this point? I, mean, Big I ben, think he would be. I mean, he saw two two of their best players make their exit, and and again blamed him and blamed him for it. What's the easy thing to do to blame him? I mean, I don't know behind the scenes what happened, but it's it's once. Once Bell got on that train, it was easy for Brown to get on the train. I agree. I agree um, with that. Okay, well, then if two players were saying it, then he's the problem, and they're not really I, – I, like I said, I don't know all the back behind-the-scenes stuff, but as far as this schedule is concerned, I don't even see Ben making it to that game. I see Mason Rudolph playing. Ben has been game. talking about retirement for a long time. The Steelers have kept their playoff dreams on life support for the last three seasons. Mm-hmm. They, they started the season off terrible and then were able to limp their way into the playoffs. So, I mean, Pittsburgh, if they start one and five, they Ben might just be like, yeah, I'm just going to walk through the rest of the season. Like, I, I'm... I'm going to collect the paycheck. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I don't really... Tr- I know it's... I don't ever want to question a player's character... However, there are enough character concerns that have been mentioned by other people closer to the organization that really make you think, if they start with their foot on the brake instead of the gas this year, how long is how long is he going to be invested? Well, if he's the, if he's a guy that, that was it's always talking about retiring, and they got rid of Bell and Brown, and then he re, he does retire, mm-hmm. I don't think he was the issue. Because like, hey, if he was the issue, they would have told Bell and Brown. That's a fascinating listen, point to me. Listen, he's going to be gone soon. Yeah. Stay here. Okay, yeah. we'll get you some other quarterback. Yeah, that's a fascinating point to make. I do like ending the season at home. Um, although you do have that questionable game with the Patriots. You don't know where it's going to be uh, or what day it's going to be. But again, you'll, we'll get details on that not too far ahead of the game. So that's yeah. fine. Um, but ending the season, division, division. If you're looking to get into the playoffs, those two games. Here's my question. Sure. Yeah, you obviously. Um, but what game do you think will have more of an impact on the playoffs? Determining the playoff contenders from the AFC East. Week 17, week 16, or week 17? Would it be playing the Patriots or playing the Jets? Because you only make that... I mean, because the Patriots are going to be playing Miami you that know, week. You know what? I'm going bigger going home. I'm saying 
the Patriots game is going to make more of a difference. Really? You know, yeah, because do you know why? why? Because our subscribers want to know that that Patriots game is going to matter. Right? Because think about it. Do you want to say, all oh, the Patriots have a division locked up by then? No, you're hoping the Bills are competitive enough to say that that Patriots game could decide the division. So I'm going to say the Patriots game. Not because I think the Bills are going to win the division. Right? That's my opinion to that completely aside. Because that's what's going to make the schedule the most exciting is if that Patriots game decides, not the Jets game. I don't want to know that Pittsburgh Steelers, Bills have to just beat the Steelers and Tommy Maddox. Oh, that was a brutal get, game. I don't, I don't want that again, right? I want that Patriots game to mean something. I want that game to be the game that says, okay, Patriots, if you don't beat Miami, you're out of the playoffs. That's what I want that game to be. Okay, no, no, I, was, I wasn't saying that it would, had zero importance. I'm saying which one of those two weeks you think would have more importance. I'm going to stick, because, yeah, I'm going to stick with the Patriots game. Because you got to think, the way that the team's shaped out, mm-hmm. Miami is predicted to be in the basement because they have so many moving parts changing quarterbacks that's what happens Which is, yeah that's right. the, that's just it, it that's would affect happens. any team yeah, of course all right so the bills won six games this year it, it, right right precisely you right? put the bills you, you put miami versus the patriots mm-hmm. okay all right and then so you what you do is you put the bills then against the jets for the last week of the season which usually de- defines what the division is going to be mm-hmm. So is that saying that this is the first year that we're going to have the matchups of Darnold and Allen contending for the division title? Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see how the season plays out because you start the season in the, you start the season at uh, at MetLife against Darnold and Bell, and you end the season in Buffalo with Darnold and Bell. You're bringing up bad memories. What? You're bringing up so many bad memories. I remember the year that the Patriots won the Super Bowl. The Bills beat them 31 and nothing in the opening season, the yeah. opening game. And then the final game was against the Patriots in Foxborough, and Foxborough and the Patriots beat them 31 nothing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Again, you know, I, I don't think Le'Veon Bell understands what happens with the Jets. <laughs> I don't think he understands that organization well at all because the Jets that we've seen the last. 15 years have been a disaster the end of the season. So I'm, I'm comfortable with this. History tells me that I could be comfortable with this. What's your prediction? For the Bills record? Mm-hmm. And don't cop out. Don't do the easy cop out one. They're going to go 4-2 and two in the division. 10-6 and six is the cop out, isn't it? 10-6 and six is the cop out. Yeah. Well, four and two in the division puts them at eleven and five. Ten and six is like the eight and eight. It is. Me. It's like yeah. uh, make a decision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to say uh, they can go, they can go, do as well as eleven and five with this with the with the way the schedule pops up early in the season. They could go eleven and five. My concern here is the middle of that season where you're losing those division games, but those non-division games because you've got Denver, then you've got Dallas immediately after. Um, yeah, for the first time, you're looking at the schedule and saying, these are very winnable games. But there's some holes in the schedule that are going to cause problems. You know, the, the Denver game and then the Dallas game, those games are close together. It's going to cause a problem. If you have your bye week, then you have, um, you play uh, Miami and then you play Philly. Right? Those those holes in the schedule are going to be a challenge. Mm-hmm. So, and that, and, you know, again, I don't think the Bills are, depending on the rookie draft class, to come in and make big waves right away because those guys flame out after week 12. You know? so is Unless it, it's, they're on a rotation, like we said. Right. They're you know, defensive tackle. Right. The bye week early for them might be a good thing because those college players are just, they're still on go because they've been training all off season. Their mm-hmm. season ended and they started draft prep and they're still training. And their bodies don't get a rest until after their rookie season is over. Because as soon as the draft happens, guess what? They go right into rookie mini camps and then after rookie mini camps are in that it's voluntary and then you know and then you gotta find a place to stay you gotta move it's you gotta it's, move. it's a, a runaway train your rookie season because as soon as your college season is over that starts your nfl season so you're playing back to back that's why these guys their bodies die out they mm-hmm. don't get a break so you're going 11 and 5 you're going 11 and 5 an optimistic 11 and 5 just because of the way the first five weeks of the season are. 
All right. <clears throat> what are you doing? Ten and six. Oh, come on! 